ordered this little beauty off Amazon because this drive gear doesn't quite cut it in my opinion. I'm getting prints when I run uh, three millimeter layer heights. I'm getting prints that do that randomly. Sometimes they'll be fine, sometimes they'll look like that. So what I'm going to do is put this uh, dual drive gear extruder on it. And what I've already found out is if you look real close right there, you can see the alignment of that hole to the center line of the where the filament runs on the extruder gear. Well, originally that's off by just a little bit. I used a thin washer to shim it up to get the alignment pretty much dead on. That gear has a little bit of float in it. It does move back and forth a little bit. I also ordered a replacement set of gears for it because I didn't realize one of the reasons I ordered these is because if you can look in that package you can see little tiny bearings in there. I didn't realize that this one already has a bearing inside here. So if you do order this, this is running on roller bearings. Pretty good. Now all I have to do is put it together. Pretty simple. About the only thing you got to pay attention to is where the set screw goes in. On the shaft, the set screw has to go on the flat side of the shaft. Yeah, somewhere in there. There's the set screw. Out with the old, in with the new. Alright, I'll still have to set the height on this, but I'm just putting it on the shaft for now. There's not enough depth on this screw hole in the stepper motor for that screw, so I'm going to have to trim that off a little bit. So I figured out why all the screws seem to be a little bit long. I don't have any kind of a mount plate on my extruder motor, so I just spaced it out with a couple washers for now. Eventually I'll get around to mounting this thing solid, but right now I just lays on top of my box for my printer. Anyway, now I just got to put this back on here with my little spacer that lined up my center line for the hole going in and out. I dropped the drive gear right down here so you can see the driven gear and with that little spacer in there that raises this driven gear up just a little tiny bit. I'm using a clean-out rod to run through here, but you can just see the driven gear right there as the rod goes past it. If I can get this all lined up through the camera. And that's pretty well lined up. It was a little bit low before I put that spacer in there. Should work out fine. And now all I got to do is get the height of the drive gear right. And that pretty much finishes up other than screwing in the fittings. I think that without that spacer, this would probably run just fine, but I'm just trying to get everything as perfect as I can. little adjuster plate goes in the bottom of the spring. I don't know why you need to tighten that spring anymore, 
this is the spring off of the uh, single-sided extruder and this is off the dual gear extruder man that is a lot more pressure it's part of the reason why they probably feed better so much pressure on them <laughs> oh yeah that's a, that's a strong spring I ended up changing that spring for the lighter silver spring it was just way too much pressure I'm just going to make sure that that's tight enough so that it doesn't fall out. It definitely doesn't need any more spring pressure. Holy cow. Yeah, she's putting some pretty decent marks in. I think that'll work. All right. Put these in. It comes with a little plastic clip, and I'm going to put that on the bottom side, on the bottom tube, running down to the extruder to make sure that doesn't come off accidentally. Never had a problem with it before, but hey, I got the parts. Why not use them? This fitting has a step down inside of it that when you try to thread the filament through, it catches. So I'm going to run a tube down inside of that, and this is big enough to run a tube in here. So I'm going to cut this just past being flush with that and then tighten fitting down on it. Hopefully that'll work and make it smooth going through because right now the filament gets caught on the fitting. And the number one goal here is to not cut my fingers off. Slide that into that fitting and now we'll see how well this goes through here. Yep, now I can get it right through there. Before I tried like five or six times, couldn't get it to go through. And there it is. Like I said, no bracket to hold it down. It just sits up there on top of the printer enclosure. My beautiful temporary printer enclosure that's been being used for like three years. Maybe if I, uh, now that I'm using my printer a little more often, I might actually take some time to uh, make a new enclosure. At least now I know what size it needs to be. All right, now I'm gonna just set it up to run a print and I'm gonna run, uh, I can't do that yet. I have to set up the extruder uh, steps so that it extrudes the right amount of filament because the uh, gears are a little smaller diameter than the old gear. Control motion, go down. getting into the steps there's Z E that's extruder we need to have that number right there written down because that's the number that we're going to work from to get the right amount of steps when we find out how many steps we do have I should have said when we find out how many millimeters we are moving I've marked off 100 millimeters on the filament something very interesting about a GTEC printer Go to prepare, move axis, one millimeter, extruder, it's already at 100 so I'm just going to go to 200 to get it to move another 100. But if I take it all the way to 200, the extruder's moving now. If I take that thing up too fast, I think it'll move maybe 40 or 50 at a time. If I take it beyond that, I get anywhere near 100, it just shuts off. So I'm just going to keep turning this a little bit as it feeds out and see how close we get. But it will not take the whole hundred at once. I didn't know that. 
I bet you I tried this 25 times and had this thing just all of a sudden shut off at random times. Sometimes it would act like it was going to do it. Sometimes it would stop. And it's moving. After doing it with nothing connected to the other side of the extruder, I came up with about 35 millimeters short. I am probably not the guy to be explaining math to anybody. But this is where the E-step started at. And this is the 100 millimeters you were trying to get. It came up 35 millimeters short. So you subtract the 35 from 100. You got 100 over 65. This is the math you have to do. You take that times the original 93. And that equals your new E-steps. Set it to that. Try again. See how much you're off. And if you're off by anything, that's where the number that you're off by goes into your equation at. And this worked out perfect for me. I need to point out that each time you do the test, this number right here is the number of steps that it's actually entered into the machine. So in other words, the second time that I did this test, I used this number right here in this position. I hope I'm clearing that up for everybody. After you've done your math for your new E-steps, go back into control, motion. This is all the way on the bottom on this one. Click, change it from 93 to 143.07. Go back to control. Make sure you click store memory. Otherwise you turn it off and turn it back on. It'll be back at the 93. I did repeat the 100 millimeter test a couple of times and I believe I ended up right at 145 for my E-steps. idea what I'm doing. There's my mark. And I have to keep turning it, the knob a little bit at a time. I'm at about 170 now. Alright, that's plus the 100 that was already there. And there's my mark right there. It just disappeared. And it stopped with the mark right at the edge. So it's doing right at 100. So that should be perfectly tuned. Now all I can do is try to make a print and see what happens. The part I'm running here is the magnetic controller attachments for a VR rifle that I got off Thingiverse. I'll leave a link in the description below for the original rifle and uh, my updated version of these magnetic controller attachments. Adding the dual gear extruder for this printer was a great help. Uh, it makes perfect prints every time now, never a slip. Hope this information helps somebody out. Like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Oh, and here's a picture of the uh, scope that I made off Thingiverse. I'll leave the link for that below too. And as always, thanks for watching.